you tell us a little bit about your story and um Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> being put in the hot spot, but that's fine. Uh, hot seat. Um, look, I guess I start with a little bit of me and my background. I am originally, so Andrea Wade, originally from, um, I nearly said what I say to different audiences. I nearly said that I'm from Transylvania, Romania, but to you all, I can say that I'm from Brussels. Um, so I was born in Brussels and I came to Dublin. I live in Dublin in Ireland about 18 years ago. Um, yeah. And as the, the introduction kind of stated, um, our startup was acquired about three weeks ago by iSIMS, um, which is a US company based in Homdell in, in, in New Jersey in the old Bell Labs building. Um, and um, what we did at opening.io, we were a research driven company and we were building talent recommender engines we're an api company and was selling them into vendors into other hr tech companies that were building upon our apis and um yeah we we were acquired about three weeks ago so it's all um madness right now but it's 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 good man madness and i think the two of us share the the umbrella the very widely umbrella of ai uh, which is something that we don't necessarily um come uh, kind of frame our, our company with but uh, realistically we we were a data science company um solving stuff for the talent management industry um and my understanding is that you guys are also a data science company um solving some problems um uh but i'll let you give some insight yeah so in romania i think a lot of people know what we're doing so i'm not gonna go through all that um basically okay. we we use uh, artificial intelligence for um, recognizing people when they type on computers and mobile phones, we look at um, um, how they press the keys and how they move the phone around, those kind of things. So behavioral biometrics, if you want, related, uh, you know, to, to how, how people type. It. And um, this field is very connected to artificial intelligence. You pretty much cannot do this without artificial intelligence. Um, Unlike other fields in which artificial intelligence is more like a buzzword, um, a lot of companies like to say that they're like an AI company. Um, in our case, this is crucial to to the existence of the company. Um, I'm uh, I'm now based in uh, in in the US in Brooklyn, and um, the whole the rest of the team is pretty. And we have some 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 op an office here as well. But the rest of them is in Romania, so and we started in Romania, and we uh, very often we're seen as a Romanian company, even if in in essence we're actually a U.S. company. Okay, um, okay, I am very disconnected about what what is going on in in Romania. Unfortunately, especially in the last five years, what I've just been head down building opening, um, but being here eighteen years. And being from Russia, where unfortunately I will say this, there's not as many things uh, uh, happening as one would want to. I know there's loads happening in Bucharest, in Cluj, you know, in Timisoara, but I think we're not representing properly. Maybe don't kill me, um, but just from when I go home. Um, so I'm, I, I, I wasn't sure. And we were founded here because again, I live here um, and I've been here for the last 18 years. And my co-founder, who's also from Brasov, uh, moved here about six years ago. Um, and Do you have any had... presence in Romania or, or is it just that you're Romanians? We're Romanians, but we have no presence in Romania, unfortunately. Okay. That's, that's <laughs> um, awesome. So uh, you built everything uh, in Dublin, but you're not... You, you have no office, no employees in Romania, right? No, we're an Irish company. <laughs> how, 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 how many people were you before you, you got acquired? Seven. We were seven people. We've built 
a lot. We had a really strong founding team like uh, Adrian, um, just to make a reference back to Romania. Uh, many years ago, he, he won the, uh, uh, program, the National Programming Olympiad first place. So just, you know, a very smart guy who learns fast and pulls stuff together. And he was also involved in a, in a startup that we did that, that um, was built in Brasov and in New York that was actually bought by Wedding Wire. Apple nearly bought it. And these are some of the stories that maybe the ecosystem now would not necessarily know about because they were doing this kind of stuff 10 years ago or whatever. Uh, but yes, we had startups in, in Brasov that got acquired in, in, in the US you know, a decade ago or whatever. Um, but yeah, we were absolutely founded here and I think also the purpose of today's talk is also to reflect on to what is going on in today's world and how businesses or us are are coping or are maneuvering um, and through the current complicated climate for so many reasons yeah um, well we can we can dive into it if you want a little bit more um, Maybe you can tell us a little bit about how the pandemic is affecting you guys at this point. Well, I mean, we were obviously, we were really fortunate um, to be able to continue the, the acquisition process for us started last year, really the talks. So we were very fortunate to be able to, you know, close the deal in, in today's climate. Um, and our industry per se was hit pretty hard because we're in the, recruitment world right we and and a lot of that has stopped a lot of uh, companies not only that they have stopped hiring but they have also um you know had to address their workforce and they had to uh, let go of a lot of people but then also within our industry there have been many entities that have been hiring uh um you know particularly in within recruitment so for us it's it's uh, a very interesting time to be in also because as i said we were selling the apis to other industry entities and we could see how this affects everyone if you're a job board if you're some kind of a chat bot that talks to candidates if you are some kind of a candidate crm or an applicant tracking system or whatever you are within that industry we, we could see how um how all these uh, different entities were being affected um but right now we're, we're at an interesting part of our journey being part of a, a much larger organization and we just have a very exciting roadmap ahead of um of us and we're happy the team has all stayed you know and uh, nobody has left and we, we we will continue to grow um but it's it's definitely I think current times, you know, you come back to runway, you come back to, oh, I was about to raise and now all the investors have disappeared or, you know, what is going on in the world is directly affecting my colleagues or me. There's just so many layers of, of what, is, what is going on. And I think as a, someone running a company, it's, it's tricky. So how are you guys doing? I think we're doing well. We don't we don't see that as much. Um, in my perspective, um, there are more investors interested in what we're doing, not only typing DNA but also uh, the domain that we're uh, we're in at this point, um, namely identity access management and fraud prevention. Mm -hmm. I think because a lot of work is done now remotely and a lot of um, learning is done remotely, a lot of yeah. you know ev ev everything like even. You know, banking. A lot of people used to go to the actual office, uh, bank office. You know, to to the older banking. Including my parents at home, which I'm helping navigate this. So yeah. So now there, everyone is moving online. So with that comes a lot of uh, potential fraud and a lot of security concerns. So two FA is is a great, a great, uh, very important uh, thing. Uh, for all these industries and one of one of the ways to to do that is to use um technologies like typing dna not only for 2fa but also like different types of fraud prevention when you want to make sure that that user is um who they say they are um also for like um uh e-learning we have a, we have a great um 
uh, a great number of companies in the e-learning space that are verifying students with our technology. And it's increasingly, um, um, the, the field is growing really fast. Mm -hmm. So we're growing and we're in different fields, all of which are growing really fast. And even because of the COVID um, pandemic, so it's the other way around, we actually saw uh, around 40% month over month growth, uh, April over March, and March was record as well. So we've seen incredible growth in the last few months, um, you know, um, and actually I think the COVID, COVID uh, pandemic actually helped us um, uh, grow. The demand is growing really fast. It's true that there is a number of companies, so clients, that are freezing investments or, you know, um, they're, they're freezing partnerships with companies like us or like any, any other third party company. And there are some investors who are freezing, um, who are freezing uh, you know, investments. But um, it's still true that investors have a lot of money to invest. And the fact that they don't know whether it's a good time to invest or not, it doesn't change the situation. They do have the money in their bank and money in the bank will not produce uh, a, a, a profit. So you, you have to invest them. So what are the fields these investors are looking at? Um, a lot of, you know, a lot of it's like health, a lot of it's um, uh, remote, anything that is done remote, anything that, you know, supports working from home, learning from home, um, you know, shopping, banking, all those things that you do from home now more often. Um, I think investors are looking at those areas and cybersecurity, especially identity access management providers and the companies around that are really at the core or of you know all these services and uh for us the pandemic wasn't that bad yeah of course we're working from home we're doing a lot of um meetings more than than we used to i think you know people feel more isolated they need to talk to to each other more um they need more like informal um uh, you know, talks, because probably if you sit next to each other uh, in an office, you know, those informal, uh, you know, discussions take place anyway, or when you yeah. make a coffee, when you, you know, you know, get to the office, when you go out, when you see something on somebody's screen, you just ask, you know, what is that? What are you doing? You know, you know, and it sparks a conversation. But if everyone is working from home, you don't get the time to talk with the other, with the other uh, you know, members of your team and uh, things starts to become a little bit um, unusual for most of us. Um, yeah. I personally like working from home, but um, I went from like 30% of calls to like, of time doing calls to like 80% of time doing calls. Yeah. And I, I constantly feel, um, you know, like, like it's too much, like it's, I need to actually go out and see people and, 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 you know, go to the office. And I think this is going, going to be a big problem for everyone. So even if the business goes as planned or even better, I think this is going to be a big problem. Uh, working from home is not for everyone and definitely, uh, uh, it, it's hard. We're not growing. So we're adding people where yeah. our plan yeah. was to grow like three times in size, two yeah. to three times in size. Okay. And when you're working from home with people that you know that you previously work in an office, yeah, yeah, that's that's manageable. But yeah. when you have to onboard people, absolutely, who, and everything is done online. Yeah. This is something yeah. you know you can do, but it's it's not easy yeah. and uh, has its own challenges. Absolutely. I mean, we have experienced that as well ourselves being, you know, onboarded onto uh, the company that we just joined uh, three weeks ago. So there was a lot of online training. And is it? Um, can you can you tell us a little bit about um, how uh, the acquisition happened, or how the initial discussions happen, and um, you know how, like, just to, to present us how things like that. Um, happen what is yeah. the what is this you know schedule behind an acquisition how much time Absolutely. it takes what kind of discussions happen before um yeah what's 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 the type of involvement that it asks from you guys and uh, well if you think you that, something like that? It, and I'll, I'll say this jokingly that if you think that raising is easy 
sell a company. <laughs> so none of them is easy, right? So none of it is easy. Um, we, so we've been around for five years and um, the company, and there's still a lot of stuff that I can't talk about yet because it's too early uh, um, of how the process worked. Uh, and I can certainly talk about it offline. If someone is interested, they can ping me, find me on LinkedIn or whatever, and we can we can get offline. We can we can talk about that. But some of the things I, I, I can't yet say because it is too early. But really for us, it was a mix of things. We had this customer um, in New York, um, a company called Jibe, uh, who became our customer uh, in 2018 and then iSIMS acquired them last year, about a year ago. Um, and then suddenly, you know, they acquire our customer, our customer was using our APIs uh, and suddenly iSIMS now ingest their technology and we're inside of iSIMS making a difference. They're using our product. So for us, it was, it, you know, it was a process where a customer of ours saw the value of our technology and acquired us. So for a few months, you say goodbye to sleep and you say buckle up and you just work and you go through their process and there's a lot and there's and now with the power of hindsight what i would say to other founders is that make make sure you have your house in order our chairman would office say andrea do you have the let's let's hold the board or this tell you know hold a board meeting do you have the minutes let's where do you keep this where do you keep that all the stuff all this nice housekeeping um um Stuff that we should all be doing, um, I, I highly recommend it if your exit is being acquired by a company at some stage. Um, I'm just yeah. seeing some questions there. So what I can tell you that here in Ireland, you know, we're about 4.5 million people and a few large cities, uh, 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 but not many. Here in Ireland, you have to think global, and I'm not saying this lightly. Here in Ireland, you have to think global from day one or day zero right uh, because the market that is here it's not enough for you to if you want to talk about high potential startups about scale uh you're not going to get very far in in ireland so this is something critical to the dna of startups that are founded here tech startups or other food is big as well here you have to think global from day one um uh, very often because you might uh, you know walk into we have we have all the large uh, tech uh, companies here and you can easily walk into Google or Twitter or Facebook or whoever you want to um, and, and have a chat but you might learn that decisions are made in the US so traditionally the path for startups here in Ireland is set up here if your target market is here, you, you try to find, you know, your first use case, your first customer or whatnot, but you go Ireland, UK, US. Some people go Ireland, US, um, uh, but you think global from day one, you, you, not necessarily with, with recruitment, you don't put boots on the ground from, from day one uh, necessarily, but you you do a lot of travel and you think of clients that you can acquire no matter where they are. You don't start with local really realistically. Well, we have kind of the same issue in Romania. I mean, it's not like uh, in Romania, you, you don't have to go global. I, I think you, you do have to go global if you're building something out of Romania. If you want to grow like like big, like the unicorn in what you're doing. Um, I, I don't want to add, a, more to that, maybe if you have other questions, I would rather go um, and ask uh, and answer some something else. Well, for what we're doing, there are a lot of challenges. I think uh, building a really good technology is very, very important, but having it used by clients is even more important. And then uh, I think a really, really big challenge that not a lot of uh, companies understand very well is how do you find the best? How do you find the best people to work with? It's really hard to put together a team that is uh, going to be a, to create a billion dollar company. It's really hard. You have to have everyone aligned. You want to have some people don't want to build a billion dollar company. 
some people don't want to build a global company. Some people just want a job and they don't want a boss or something like that. And this is not the place to, to this is not the kind of uh, company that uh, you need those kind of people. So you actually need to have everyone aligned on what you want to build, what you want to do. Everyone understand to understand their role in the whole scheme. Not everybody can be the CEO. Not everybody can be the, the chief designer. And so sometimes the website doesn't look like everybody wants it to look, or the I don't know the application doesn't perform the same the same way that like everybody wants. Or sales, um, you know, is it's it's hard, and everybody else thinks that that you know the problem is the salesperson, and we have to change it. And maybe it's not the salesperson. Maybe it's a, it's more complicated thing. So. I think it's a big, big challenge to have a great team. Uh, it's 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 overlooked because there are these extremely talented people that are able to build great teams, and it seems to be so easy that we overlook. Uh, we, we rarely uh, we rarely understand this, and we often overlook, and we think it's all about the technology, or all about the idea, all about the you know, money that you pour into the, the startup. And it's not that, it's the people. Everything is about the people. And uh, if you think about the most important startups, the startups that were most successful, or companies that were most successful, they often pivoted. Even Amazon pivoted. They started with books. Now they're doing everything. Or any, any company you can think of, they pivoted from what they started with. So idea is important, but it's not the most important. The most important is the team. Very rarely they change the team. Maybe they change the role of each player or they bring something to somebody new, but it's rare when the core team changes. So it's very, very important. And this is something not a lot of people understand. I just talked earlier with um, a startup that I that I help a little bit. And um, <clears throat> they are so focused about the solution and what they're, they're building and that's better than the competition and those kind of things. I think all that, that is great and it's really important, but but uh, but people is, uh, are more important. And uh, even if you look at other companies uh, that that uh, are growing fast, even from Romania, like UiPath, for example, I think um, the most important ingredient there is is the team. Very few people understand that. Very few people understand that. It's, it's and it's not only the like the leadership, like the the founders. It's 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 the entire team. Mm -hmm. And and until you reach a, a certain size, like uh, now we're a little bit over twenty, like twenty five something like that. Um, <clears throat> until you reach a certain size, every person is very is critical, is very very important because it can drive your business towards a direction that otherwise you will not get there. After you reach a certain point, let's say hundred people, I think um, the company starts moving towards the corporation era. Not everybody likes that. And that's a point where you need a different kind of approach and different kind of people. But I think what we're talking here is about startup stage. And mm -hmm. getting there is really, really hard. So getting to like 100 people, 50, 100 people company, that's really, really hard. And to get there, the essence, I think, is the people. And including the investors. I think it's very, very important what the investors you take, uh, you take on board. Most people think investors are for money, right? I mean, you need investors because they give you money. And this is not true. This is false. It's, it's most of the time false. I think the most, most important um, milestones that we reached, we reached because we had great, uh, along with a great team, we had great investors. Um, I could mention Gapminder and Dan, and I could mention Jekka, but I can also mention the new, the new investors from Google, Gradient, um, they are extremely helpful. And and I don't know if we could have reached this point without them. Or Techstars, Techstars Ventures uh, helped us a lot. Uh, great, great people that are uh, that are helping us. We had over, at this point, we have over 30 entities that invested in us. Most of these guys are, you know, angel investors, um, co-founders of other companies. CEOs and so forth. And at the beginning, you say, "Hey, I only need this this money. If I get one investor to give me money, then it's fine. I don't I don't need to talk to all these people." But actually, you need because all these people become sort of evangelists. They, whenever it's a good moment, they will talk about the fact that they invested in your company. They will talk about you as a founder, and they will they will sort of um, introduce to somebody else that they know in a different way that you can introduce yourself. I guess I do want to echo. 
Raoul said about people, it is, <laughs> it's just, it's so important that I can't even find the words. The people making the decision, it could be so disruptive if you make a bad hire or if you have, uh, uh, you know, you take money from the wrong person, inc incredibly disruptive. And there's just so many stories around that. And then obviously incredibly positive when you make the right hires and when you build the right team, with the right culture and so on. And for us, this was particularly important also because we built a product in an industry that we knew nothing about. And I used to be, I mentored at all the incubators and accelerators here in Ireland. I used to do a lot of mentoring and be very involved in the community here. And when I would talk to startups, I would, you know, even as an investor, you go, what's, what's this person's background in this industry? What do you know about the problem that you're trying to solve? And we did exactly what you're kind of told not to do or what you hear that investors will not invest in if you're not personally invested into something right um but we weren't and we 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 did it so i don't recommend it however sitting close to the customer or the opposite of, of that would have been absolutely devastating to us so our first hire was someone of the industry and we have done beyond our best to just sit with the customer and ask the questions you dreaded most to ask. The stuff that you don't want to do is, is a big kind of thing that I would say to everyone. The stuff that makes you stick up, I have to do this, do that first. Uh, and ask the hard questions from, from the customers. And I know that you ask, you know, what did you do? kind of wrong or what were some, some milestones, but this is something that we could have done very wrong. And we, power of hindsight, we've done a good job in staying very close to the customer and truly understanding what are we solving here. Um, but absolutely team, you know, what are you solving for? And then, you know, there's a million decisions that you take every day that could, could trip you up. But one thing that I can say that we also had was focus. I looked back recently on the first deck that I put together uh, in 2015 and I could use it today. So although getting there was not a straight line and it meant pinging, you know, understanding uh, the, the industry and all that, the vision from day one, it stayed the same. And that is absolutely critical, knowing what, where you want to go or what you want to achieve at a core level, not necessarily how you do it. I'll stop talking now.